solar base, much like this one. My name is Erin, and while the first gather is being made, I will tell you a little of the history and technique of glass artistry. In performing the art of glass blowing, we wish to enlighten the community in an otherwise elusive medium. been used as an artistic medium since around 3000 BC. Then, as now, glass is made by melting a mixture of silica, sand, and lime. Color is then added to the glass with the addition of metallic oxides. Copper, for instance, creates blue and green tones. Manganese creates purples. Reds, yellows, and oranges are created with the addition of silver and gold. Notice that the glass is a brilliant orange color. This is due to the extreme temperature of the molten glass. Today's piece will be a rainbow of colors on a white powdered background. Jody has just taken her first gather or layer of molten glass, rolled it into chips of colored glass, and then melted that color into the surface. She is now starting the bubble, or inside, of the vessel. It is a theory that in Egypt, glass was first discovered when they noticed the sands beneath their ancient bonfires had become molten. The first glass vessels were created using a technique known as core forming. In this technique, hot glass would be trailed repeatedly over a clay or porcelain form. Once the glass had cooled, the core would be broken or scraped out. Such painstaking techniques make glass a rare and expensive luxury item similar in value to gold or precious gems. Jody is now taking her second gather or layer of molten glass from the day furnace. The day furnace acts as a well, holding a pot of molten glass, and remains at a constant temperature of just over 2,000 degrees. The glass cools quickly in between steps, giving the artist less than a minute of working time before the glass has to be reheated. Color is being added to the molten glass by rolling it into chips and powders of colored glass, then reheating that in the furnace also maintained at 2,000 degrees. This furnace is used to reheat the glass between steps and is only kept on whilst the glass blower is working. taking her third and final gather. Each gather about doubles the size of the piece.
in ancient Rome that free blowing was first discovered and glass became available to all classes. Free blowing is a fairly straightforward technique that involves gathering molten glass at the end of a hollow tube known as a blowpipe. The glass is then inflated into a bubble. now using a tool known as the jack. The jack is used to create the jack line. This is where the piece will be removed or separated from the blowpipe. The marber is used to shape the glass into a cone. This cone will better fit into the mold. is another technique that was discovered in Rome. Originally, molds were made out of wood, clay, or porcelain and were often broken after one use. Jody's mold is made of steel, as is the blowpipe and the marver. center of the world. In fact, during the Renaissance, glass artistry flourished. It was at this time that all of the glassmaking houses of Venice, for fear of fire from the great furnaces, were moved to a small group of islands known as Murano. This forced seclusion on Murano created a tight-knit and secretive society of glass artists. Techniques were usually handed down from father to son, and sons would begin their apprenticeships as early as five years of age. Furnaces would begin by stoking the furnaces, first with wood and later with coal. Present day furnaces can be run on electricity or gas. Our furnaces are run on propane and are driven by forced air. Jack line. In scoring 
along the jack line, she will be able to more easily separate the glass from the blowpipe. The chill of the water also helps to give an easy break from the pipe. the open end. The open end is the coolest part of the piece because it was the closest to the blowpipe where the metal rapidly cools the glass. There are many techniques displayed before you and one of which is the Goral technique. This is accomplished by overlaying colors of glass on the surface of the piece. Then, cutting and etching of a pattern into those colors and returning the piece of the fire to give the design fluidity before encasing it in clear glass. Many of Jody's signature pieces are inspired by this technique. Following our demonstrations today, Jody will be offering the experience of blowing glass. This experience with the lost art of glass blowing is designed to give anyone the experience of the trained glass blower as she walks you through and guides your hands in the making of a blown piece of glass. It takes many years to become a master in the art and only a small percentage of people experience the magic of this medium when it's expertly performed with the hands of a trained glass blower. Today you can sign up for a session with the artist and can keep the piece that you yourself created. See us after the show for the experience that we call Man vs. Media. The tips of the jack are now used to open the end of the vase. Centrifugal force is used by spinning the glass rapidly inside of the furnace to flare the open end into a plate. At the desired diameter, the piece will be dropped to form the fluted base. removed from the punky, it is then placed into the annealer. The annealer is maintained at 930 degrees and cools down very slowly overnight. This process both tempers the glass and prevents it from cracking. the bottom and the finished base. If you're interested in purchasing this piece or if you have any questions, please stay and talk to us, either myself or the artist. Jody Bowe. Thank you.